Hey everybody, this is WireDogSec, back with another video for you guys, and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully, you're ready to learn something here today, and today's video, we're going to be going over this room in Try Hack Me called Junior Security Analyst Intro. Play through a day in the life of a junior security analyst, the responsibilities and qualifications needed to land a role as an analyst. Let's get into it. All right, there's a lot of text in this room here, so I'm just gonna skim over some of the material here. So be sure to pause the video or go ahead and create a free Try Hack Me account and check out this room because this room is free. In the junior security analyst role, you will be a triage specialist. You will spend a lot of time triaging or monitoring the events, logs, and alerts. The responsibilities for a junior security analyst or tier one SOC analyst include monitoring and investigate the alerts most of the time it's a 24-7 SOC operations environment. That's true. You'll be doing shift work. Configure and manage the security tools. Develop and implement basic IDS signatures. Participate in SOC working groups meetings. Create tickets and escalate the security incidents to the Tier 2 or team lead if needed. Required qualifications. Most common. Zero to two years of experience with security operations. Basic understanding of networking, etc., etc. Operation systems or operating systems. You'll need to know knowledge about that. Web applications. Scripting programming skills are a plus. As it says there, they're a plus. They're not needed, but they can come in handy to put your head of the competition if you do have those skills. Desired certifications, CompTIA, Security Plus. There's also other entry-level certifications out there that can help you land a junior SOC analyst position. I know there's a recent new one by um, the uh, by ICS Squared. They created one called Certified in, in uh, Cybersecurity. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. And there's also other hands-on certifications out there that help you get these skills to land a job like this. It says as you progress and advance your skills as a junior security analyst, you will eventually move up to tier two and tier three and overview of security operations center, three tier model. It's got some fancy little graphs there. So be sure to read through here. Monitors network traffic log events, workers on tickets, et cetera, et cetera. Then tier two has a little bit more responsibilities, further deep uh, focuses on deeper investigations, analysis, remediation, practical hunts for adversaries, et cetera, et cetera. Tier 3, Threat Hunter, works on more advanced investigations, performs advanced threat hunting and adversary research malware reversing. What will be your role as a junior security analyst? Now, I did state up here, it's going to be triage and, or triage specialist. It says you're going to be spending a lot of time triaging and monitoring the event logs and alerts. Now, let's move on to task number two here. Security Operations Center, and it just goes over the, what the SOC is, et cetera, et cetera. So be sure to pause the video and read through this. Here, let's check out this chart, or these, this pretty little uh, picture here. What is included in responsibilities of the SOC? Ticketing, of course, you're gonna have tickets to work through. Log collection, of course, you're gonna have to collect or get logs from various different devices, systems, what have you. Knowledge base, you're gonna create a knowledge base of of common things that you're seeing, common procedures, so you know what to do, or maybe you're training a new person and you want them to know how to do the proper protocols and procedures of how to resolve an incident or event. Research and development, you're gonna be doing a lot of that to help improve your tooling, your processes, et cetera. Aggregation and correlation, you're gonna be using that, again, when it comes to investigation. Threat intelligence, you're gonna be using that. You're gonna be using various different feeds that help you better understand the threat landscape and what you're seeing in-house. Sim, of course, Sim, you're gonna need that for um, for all the logs and information to go through so you can build out alerts, rules, and such that'll help you in your um, in your career or in your daily work activities. And of course, reporting, you're gonna be, maybe you'll have to create reports for customers or maybe you're creating reports for management, et cetera, that push up the line that have like key metrics of what you're seeing in your environment. Uh, preparation and prevention. As a junior security analyst, you stay informed of the current cyber threats. Twitter, Feedly can be great sources to keep up with the news related to cybersecurity. It's crucial to detect and hunt threats on a or work on a security roadmap to protect the organization and be ready for the worst case scenario. That's absolutely true. You're going to be doing this throughout your entire career um, if you're going to pursue this uh, career path as a as a uh, SOC analyst or even a cybersecurity analyst, depending on your your job requirements and such. Prevention methods include gathering intelligence, data, latest threats, et cetera, et cetera, TTPs, right, which we already went over in that little chart there. Better understand TTPs, check out CISA's alerts on APT40. 
And be sure to click that link, check out that uh, article they have there or posting they have there. Monitoring investigation. You're going to be using the SIM EDR endpoint detection response tools to monitor suspicious, suspicious and malicious network activities. Imagine being a firefighter and having to pull out, having a multi alarm fire, one alarm fires, two alarm fires, three alarm fires. The category classifies serious fire, which is a threat in our case. Yes, you're going to be doing that on, probably on a daily basis. You're going to see some kind of um, antivirus EDR alert come in. You got to go and investigate. Hey, okay, what exactly happened here? You got to determine if it's benign or if it's actually malicious. Did a user or somebody uh, download some kind of malicious software onto a machine? And you got to go from there and follow your procedures or even build out procedures to remediate that particular event or investigation. It says junior SOC or security analysts play a crucial role in the investigation procedure. They perform triaging on the ongoing alerts by exploring and understanding how a certain attack works and preventing bad things from happening if they can. During the investigation, it's important to raise the question how, when, and why. Security analysts find the answers by drilling down into to the data logs and alerts in combination with using open source tools which we will have a chance to explore later in this path response after investigation the SOC team coordinates and takes action on the compromised host which involves isolating hosts from the network terminating most processes deleting files and more it's exactly you're going to go through your incident response process right there's a lot of them out there i believe um you know nist has one sans has one for sure so be sure to check those out if you haven't already now let's move on to task number three we're going to be looking at some kind of uh, site on here and going through answering some of these questions at the bottom hopefully you read through all the texts from above there because we're going to go through these scenarios questions what have you and determine the correct answers and such all right so let's go ahead and dive into it here now we're looking at the SIM dashboard as it states up above, and typically this is what a SIM may particularly look like. And you can see a bunch of different, uh, I guess these are connections and such up here. And there's some log information down below. Under here, it's got the date, time, message, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's go ahead and look at this one here from 2.30. This is login failure, specified accounts, password has expired, event ID 535. Okay, and it says multiple login attempts from John Doe. Well, that's kind of odd. It says the user John Doe logged in successfully. Okay, well, you have multiple failed ones. You got one successful one here. Well, that's pretty suspicious. And on top of that, it says unauthorized connection attempt detected from IP address. All right, so obviously this IP address hasn't been allowed listed or anything like that. Okay, well, maybe you need to go ahead and check that out. And then it says successful SSH authentication attempt to port 22 from that IP address. Let's continue on. So we're going to click this suspicious activity right here. And it wants us to check the internet or use OSINT to uh, get some more information on this IP. Maybe you'll have some kind of threat intel platform in your environment, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to use various different resources to check an IP address, to gather more information. So let's go ahead and hit submit. And it says that it's malicious and it's from China. It says there are many open source databases out there like Abuse IPDB. I use this one quite a bit. It's, it's very useful. Cisco Talos is another one I use as well. There's also Virus Total, a couple other ones out there that you can use to verify the IP address or get information on the IP address, right? So let's go ahead and click next. And it wants us to uh, escalate to someone on our team. It says we shouldn't worry too much if it was a failed authentication attempt, but you probably noticed the successful authentication attempt from the malicious IP address, which we saw in that first um, uh, that first slideshow or what, what have you there. Uh, there's some stuff, some great staff working at the company. Who do we need to escalate this? Well, sales executive. Well, okay. Well, they're not on our team, obviously. Just looking by the job title, uh, security consultant. Probably not going to be this person here. Information security architect. More than likely, it's not going to be the information security architect. They're going to be on a separate team, probably. And you got the SOC team lead. Remember, um, in the previous task, we started going over the escalation processes and such. So it's going to be the SOC team lead, Will Griffin, right? And don't forget to put in that malicious IP address here that we found earlier. So let's go ahead and choose staff member block list. And once you get permission to block the malicious IP address, and now you can proceed with implementing the block rule. Block the malicious IP address on the firewall and find out what message they left for you. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and put that malicious IP in there. And once you add it to that firewall block list, there you go. You get the answer to this uh, last question here. And this is 
a typical process or procedure that you'd go through in the real world it varies by organization depending on how many staff you got how the organization is structured etc cetera, etc cetera. but this does a good job of explaining the process and procedures of what you may encounter as a junior SOC analyst now if you enjoyed this video enjoyed the content please consider hitting that subscribe button hit the like button and then comment below your thoughts and opinions as always have a nice day and i'll see you later